Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. If you're an audio or podcast listener, we just want to say thank you. You're, thank you for turning your dials to NIM today. You are listening to the smoothest cat alive, Mr. Showtime himself. If you are tuning into News in Motion for the first time, we just want to say welcome and thank you for your love and for your support. News in Motion is a news media outlet with relevant commentary and call to action. Not only are we on audio and podcast, but we can also be found on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn as well. But Today is the National Day of Love. So let us know in the chat who you got love for. Who do you have love for? And for all of the single people out there, it's okay. This is just another day for you to love yourself. Love yourself as well. Um, well, I'll see you, Miss Regina Shorts, tuning in through YouTube. Good morning to you, Miss Marion Jackson, and happy Valentine's Day to you as well. And good morning to you, Miss Deborah Johnson, tuning in through YouTube as well. It's also hump day, y'all. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday workshop and wisdom. So we will be joined momentarily by Miss Gail Dilly. But let us know if you're doing anything for the special Valentine's Day. If you're doing something for that special somebody, uh, let us know what you're doing in the chat. Or like I said, if this is just another day at work or another day that love yourself, that is perfectly all right, too. That is perfectly all right, too. Later on in the day, we will have our smooth jazz and R&B playlist playing for you as you travel throughout the roads and get ready to plan that special evening with your special somebody. But right now, we're going to get ready for some news in motion. So get ready. Grab your pen, grab your paper, invite a friend, and we'll be right back after this brief intro, y'all. All I can say is my nephew, y'all, my nephew, Isaiah Jones. He did that though, right? He did that. So I'm um, happy Valentine's Day to all of you who celebrate it. Um, it's just a day. People just seem to express their love any way that they choose to do so. I see Regina Shorts and Marion Jackson and Deborah Johnson. Deborah Johnson showed up in YouTube. That's what I'm talking about. Rosanna Bivens, Pastor Alex Williams, Adrian, Shardinia, Kim Edmondson. Good morning to all of you. And again, happy Valentine's Day. Now, y'all, the news is popping off, okay? So we have Wednesday workshop. But the question is, are we going to get there, okay? Because I cannot uh, negate getting to some of this news that we have to talk about. I see you, Latrice Jones, in here as well. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Antoinette. Good morning. Y'all are not playing today. That's what I'm talking about. So come on in here. So my goal is to get to the Wednesday workshop. But, you know, y'all's Congress people were buck wild on yesterday. So I'm going to have to get to some of that, too. Latrice says, I'm going to make it over to YouTube, I promise. Okay. <laughs> when you try to get on, it's not going to let you. We'll see you. We'll see you. All right, y'all. Today is Wednesday, February the 14th. Um, and the reason I like this day is because tomorrow's my daddy's birthday. And I just, you know, start, I just look at it. It's like, Dad, just a few more hours before you would have landed on the love day. So me and my dad will reply, but I am love. I'm like, oh God, whatever. He's he'll be 88, y'all. So it's gonna it's gonna be fun on his birthday. But anyway, y'all, today is also Lent. This is the begin for Ash. This is the beginning of Ash Wednesday. This is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Let me say that right. Um, and if you want just a few suggestions, I'm putting this in here because I can and I want to. But here's just a few suggestions if you're still wondering what you're going to give up or what you're going to do. And if you have decided on anything, please put it in the chat. Yes, I'm making time for this. Um, and I'm going to put a link in here as well so that you can see this. But um, there was a great um, article on this. They were saying that they were strictly, uh, that they're going to um, only do strictly necessary spending, which means they're going to only commit to spending what they need, absolutely need. 
Um, Deborah Johnson says, you are on the big screen in my living room. Hello. Uh, Felicia, good morning to you. Another thing is to compliment each family member daily, um, saying thank you more often during Lent. Um, you're going to do like a don't buy a certain thing for 40 days, um, taking the time to declutter, uh, generosity through donating on a regular basis through these 40 days, stop negative self-talks, no gossiping. I probably need to be on there too. Um, meaningful one-on-one -on -one time with the phones down, um, Social media scrolling, they're going to decrease that. Meal planning, skip the snooze button. They're going to stop impulse buying. They're going to have daily prayer and reflection. Um, they're going to stop procrastination. They're going to stop late night snacking. Um, for 40 days, they're going to stop judging others. They're going to reduce sugar intake. There was just a really, really good um, uh, list, and I am putting it in the chat for y'all right now. I think I think I can get it there. Um, I think it's in there. Maybe? No? Come on? Possibly? Maybe it's in there now. I don't know. I'll get it to y'all so y'all can have it. Good morning, Judy Neal. But I think it's something that we should all consider. Um, just to figure out what we're going to do if you're giving up anything. I just came off of the first 40 days of the new year, so I'm not for sure exactly what I'm going to do, but I am going to do something. But I thought we would just kick that off. So again, if you have anything that you're giving up or that you're doing this Lent, it may help someone else. Please place that in the chat so that we can talk about it and share it and give other people some ideas. All right, y'all, there's a lot going on, so let's get to these headlines. Oh, my word, there's a lot going on. Again, y'all, my goal is to get to the Wednesday workshop, but I don't know if we're going to make it there today. And town hall, and town hall tomorrow is going to be off the chain, so you don't want to miss that either. So I couldn't even move uh, the Wednesday workshop to Thursday. I'm going to try to get it in. If not, we'll carry it over to next week. But the news was too good to not deal with the news today. Y'all, there's a lot going on. All right, so Tom uh, Swazi defeated um, uh, Mazi Philpi, Philip, I think it's Philpi, um, by flipping the House seat, okay, to the Democrats in a critical special election to replace George Santos in New York, okay? Um, Mr. Swazi uh, is a former Democratic congressman who won closely watched House uh, election. Now, this will allow voting <laughs> in the House to become a tie. Okay, so hold on, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so that's what's happening. The Washington Post uh, reported uh, that this third district special election um, indicates how and, and there's a lot of truth to this, y'all. Pay attention, pay attention. This is going to indicate what's going to happen in November. Um, it sent a message that, no, 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 we, we don't like what's going on here. So this is like the first signal to them to stop all the shenanigans. But, you know, no, they can't do that because what? They played angry politics on yesterday. This is what you call angry politics. And y'all, this does not work. It does not work. So pay attention. Pay attention. Y'all going to see why in a moment, why I had to throw the Wednesday workshop off to the side. Again, we may get to it. We may not. So PBS was the first to report that the House of Representatives yesterday, they were mad from last week. They were like, I can't believe two of you knuckleheads decided to go with the Democrats and not impeach um, Mayo, May, May Rokas, Mayor Okus, Mayo, Mayor Okus. I can't even get the words out. So they were mad. So they decided to do another vote yesterday because the whip with one of the previous people to change their votes. Yeah. You know, they got so many times, so many minutes afterwards or so many seconds afterwards, depending upon what's on the floor to change their votes. Well, he changed his vote. Yeah, that happened. So they were able to do another vote yesterday, trying to save face. Well, uh, he got impeached in the House by a vote of 2014 and 2013. Pay attention. 
They rushed it yesterday because it wasn't on the docket. It was nowhere to be seen. And I looked at the agenda. They rushed it yesterday about 6.30 p.m. trying to hurry up and get it in there before the votes were tallied in New York 3rd District. Because if the votes would have been tallied, and yes, they would have still had to wait until uh, Swazi was um, uh, com uh, sworn in, it would have become tied. So they hurried up. They thought about they They rushed that thing. They were whipping up those votes. So they impeached him in the House. Well, now it's going to the Senate. It ain't going nowhere in the Senate. It'll probably just be tabled indefinitely. So just pay attention, y'all. Y'all with me? I need y'all to talk back to me today because this is on and it, this is on and popping. So, so stay with me, stay with me. So Marocas is the second cabinet member in the U.S. history to be removed from office following the 1876 impeachment of then Secretary of War William Belknap. So the Republican-led House passed two articles. They knew last week that there were some problems here. So they passed two articles. Is Yvonne on here? Yvonne, you know I'm nosy, so I had to go pull it. So this is an amendment. When you hear an amendment, which we'll get to this in writing the bill later, when you get to an amendment, you're saying you are substituting something. So they were like talking to the two who didn't vote in favor of it last week from the GOP party. They said, so what, what, what will this take for this to happen? So they had to do this. Kim Emmons says, I need you to break it down for me because I don't know how to connect the dots on this one. Well, I'm, I'm connecting them as much as I can, so follow along. So there was an amendment. They went to the two who didn't vote and said, what can we do to make this happen? Because this is called angry politics because what, what her did backfired. It, it, it was a major backfire on, on Joe Biden to talk about somebody's dead son and, and how they tried to bring in the whole mental aspect and how people started putting together uh, 77 years old and 81 years old and Pelosi being 84 or 83 and, and Maxine Waters being 82 and Bernie Sanders being, like, they, they blew them out the water, okay? And then there was a tape that's going around right now of the former guy, Donald J. Trump, who kept saying he couldn't remember he couldn't remember who his second wife was okay so they started playing that so kind of like jacked them up there so they had to figure out something else to do okay so they figured this out so there's an amendment to hr 863 y'all need to read this baby y'all it's offered by mr green of tennessee now who the heck is mr green and why is he writing this amendment and what's going on that right there y'all is a red flag have you ever heard the name of mr green in the house so that should tell you well what is this and why is this a mr green bringing this in here y'all can tell i'm getting excited because this is unbelievable and it says strike all of the resolving clause and insert the following say what so what are you striking? Well, we're striking 18 items. Here we go. We're striking that the Secretary of Homeland Security of the United States of America is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. Misdemeanor. What? Y'all was going after him for high crimes? <laughs> what? So that didn't sound right. And they knew that was not really constitutional. So the two that held out said, we got to strike that. It's not high crimes. Because high crimes will be 91 counts. Hello, somebody. 91 counts. So they had to take off high crimes. And I'm like, this is a high crime. Y'all had high crimes in the initial bill. So they... they Strike that out. Next, Mr. Green said, and that the following articles of impeachment be exhibited to the United States. Articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and the people of the United States of America against um, Al Jiro Mayorkas, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security of the United States of America in maintenance and support of its impeachments against him for high crimes. What did you just say? You took up 13 lines for that? What did you say exactly? You was just trying to make it sound real good, right? Okay, let me keep going. Article one, willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. How? Can you tell me how he did that? So they struck that out. This, these are all, they're striking that out. So they knew, well, he, 
he didn't have refusal to comply with the law. So we got to take this out. So it says the Constitution provides that the House of Representatives shall have a sole power of impeachment. You don't have that. No, we got to go to the Senate. So they took that out. Then they went on to say, including the Secretary of Homeland Security shall be removed from office on impeachment for the conviction. Get this, y'all. This is in the original bill that they had to take out. Get this. Treason. Well, when did he commit treason? I know somebody who did that on January the 6th. Bribery. Who like, yo, when y'all read these things, it's like, what is happening? Who wrote this? So remember, what I'm sharing now, they, the uh, Mr. Green, who did the amendment, was uh, he's saying, let's strike these things out because it's not true. And the guy's like, for good conscience, I really can't vote for this because none of these things happen. Hold on. When they say it in the, in the original bill, other high crimes. Well, what did he do exactly? So in the conduct while Secretary of Homeland Security and violation of his oath to support, defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to well and faithfully discharge the duties of his office. Well, they decided none of that happened. So they had to strike all of that out. So after that was taken from the record, then they said, this is what we putting in here, okay? He willfully refused to comply with the detention. Y'all remember yet last week when I was giving y'all the words to look for, now they said the detention. Well, I don't even know if he did that either, but that's what they're saying here too. Um, he talked, We and stop, pause momentarily. Well, are we going to go after Abbott for putting wired fence and their and these people are getting uh, hurt uh, at the Texas border? Are we going to deal with that? Are we going to deal with, uh, what's that dude's name in Florida who's no longer running for president? Uh, I don't even want to say his name either. But uh, he went and, and, and shipped all those people to Martha's Vineyard. Are we going to deal with that? Is that a refusal? Is that crime is that uh, uh uh treason is that bribery like what is happening here because when i heard the word bribery i'm thinking wait a minute didn't he do that when he bribed the people the plane and paid for all this that and to go to martha's vineyard and then a whole busload to new york are we going to talk about that but okay, now we're going to talk about this because we got to talk about an impeachment and we, we just we just busted it all up last week. So we got to figure out something to do this week. And we just are, we just a total mess. So we got to make something up to make this stick. Say what? Can y'all tell I'm excited? The Trees Jones said, women, Kim Edmonds says, so basically, basically they're just making stuff up. Yep, Marion says, really, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Dr. Antoinette said, high crimes is treason or leading an insurrection. There you go. Latrice Jones says, everyone not supported the original impeachment should be called to the carpet to account for this hogwash. You got that right. Yes, Ronnie boy, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie boy. So y'all, so I'm going to keep going just a little bit. Y'all, this is 20 pages. I'm not doing the whole 20 pages. But as they're pulling things out, they're talking about he's not effective. So they're changing the language. He's not effective with the mechanism to ensure appearances before the immigration courts. Well, has he been brought to the immigration court? I looked it up. He hasn't. So how are y'all running on something and striking out something and adding this language in here for doing this? And then they go for, and they say in section, and I had to be nosy, y'all. Y'all know I love this stuff. I had to be nosy because they started talking about section 235B, 1B, number three, Roman numeral five. I'm like, what is that? So I went and looked it up, and this is the act. Because I'm nosy. I need to figure out. It says that this is requiring that an alien who is placed into expedited removal proceedings and determined not to have credible fear of persecution. So y'all mad that he ain't scared of y'all? Like, seriously, is this what we're doing? I'm like, what is going on? Dr. Antoinette says, wasn't putting people on transportation vehicles that they didn't control and taking them to, to someplace other than where you said without their consent of former human trafficking? 
there's that. Kim Edmondson says, and we are paying for this nonsense. Yes, we are. So y'all, I thought, wow, this is what y'all want to do? So now they, they mad because he wasn't scared of them last week. But he's like, they said he had a smirk on his face. Y'all put that in here for real, that he had a smirk on his face. Are you kidding me right now? They did. So he smiled. I'm smiling. I'm laughing at y'all because y'all look y'all look quite crazy right about now. Seriously, seriously, all of you who voted for this. So it says on it says um, that uh, Mayorkas has an implemented a catch and release scheme whereby such aliens are unlawfully released even without effective mechanism to ensure appearances before the immigration courts for removal proceedings or to ensure removal in the case of aliens ordered removed. Y'all calling them aliens? Like, what, what is happening here? Yeah, this was some made up BS. And I'm gonna call it BS. I, I didn't say the word. I'm gonna call it made up BS because you're trying to save face. Y'all, if we don't pay attention to this election process, we are in trouble. And y'all can read this for yourself if you just go ahead and um, sign up for the Friday Rundown. I'm putting it in here. It's 20 pages. Please read it with the lens of what I shared with you all last week. Y'all, this is serious. This is called angry politics where they made up some stuff. And there was a vote of 214, 213. They flipped two of the GOP people because they struck out the previous language because they knew that could not stick. And they put in some BS to say, we have an impeachment. Y'all, do the, connect the dots. The former guy told, and I need to call his name to make this make sense. Donald J. Trump, the former president, with 91 counts. And let's not forget what the fallout was in New York with E. Jean Carroll, okay? Let's add that to the mix, okay? This guy decides after, uh, after the Iowa caucus, which was in January, y'all don't do anything with immigration, I'm running on immigration. Now we're here. They won't. They said the bills are dead on arrival. They're not doing anything with immigration, but yet you want to impeach the Homeland uh, uh, Security Secretary because you're saying he's not doing his job. No, you're not doing your jobs because there was a, a bill that came to the House, Speaker Johnson. Michael Johnson, to be exact, there was a bill that came, you called it dead on arrival, that even the security people on the border who, who doesn't want to be involved in politics said this was the uh, a sound bipartisan bill, and this is exactly what we need to clean up and keep this border secure, you turned down. You said the bill was dead on arrival, yet you want to impeach this person? No, we should impeach you for treason, for bribery, because I think it's a bribe that he told y'all not to run on this, uh, not to pass this bill because he wants to run on immigration. He had four years to do something and he did nothing, okay? But an insurrection, okay, that we're still talking about. So this is what's happening, y'all. We need to pay attention to this. And yes, I'm passionate about it. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on this. And I can only pray that we really get an understanding, get rid of all of this, who we like, who we don't like, what, how old they are, who they slept with, didn't sleep with, who they're doing this with, didn't do this, who can run the country, who can um, take care of their constituents, who's going to have effective town hall meetings where we can have these types of conversations. That's who I want to vote for. Who's going to handle the power of the purse so that there's there's things that are in place. There's, there's, there's um, um, standards, policies in place, rules, laws in place that we're taking care of, we the people. What about health care? What about foreign policy? Yeah, what about stopping all this senseless killing? 
What about that? What are we going to do? Uh, by the way, did y'all see what happened on uh, Southwest Airlines on their way to Hawaii? Two white men got in a fight in the middle of the plane. They still on. They can still fly. But I think you kicked off other people on, uh, as a no-fly list. Okay, well, I don't care who they are. If you're fighting up in the air and you're going to Hawaii, what could you possibly be fighting about headed to Hawaii? Seriously. But we're not taking care of that. Let's deal with some of these issues. Let's talk about some of these things, okay? Let's do this. And I'm still not done. So they're trying to change the narrative. So the Homeland Security preventing this whole second embarrassment, they, they held the line. They waited till everybody got in. There was a snowstorm happening on the East Coast. They waited till everyone got in, and then they did a vote. That's what happened. And they had to get it done before the ballots were counted in the third district of New York. Y'all, this is called angry politics, and this is called what is happening, and we the people must pay attention. But I'm not done. Y'all, Senate passes a $95 billion military aid bill, including funding for Ukraine at $60 billion and Israel at $14 billion. Um, and then we have Indo-Pacific at $8 billion, which I'm still looking that up. I don't know what that is. Um, the effort was split from failed border security bill last week. Here comes Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson, the speaker, said, no, I ain't doing this either. I'm just not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not sending anything. So he said he's making it real clear that, Man, there's nothing going to the president's desk because I'm not, we're not doing it here. So you're not taking up anything? Like, seriously? Oh, and by the way, the reason they went after um, Mayor Ocas, um, the Homeland Security Secretary, as an impeachment, because they knew they had nothing on Joe Biden. So they had to find out somebody else has still used the word impeachment. Let's just put that on the table also. All right, y'all, I've been digging into this. So... They sent us like, here's a bill. Like, are y'all going to do anything with it? Mike Johnson's like, no, we're not doing anything with it. Y'all y'all talk about calling and writing into your representatives. Now is the time to do this. These shenanigans between now and November the 7th, this can't continue. This is nothing but a heartache. This will, this, and by the way, this will keep people staying home for the general election. Because they're going to say, why does that matter? All they're going to do is fight, argue. Nothing's being done. Nothing's happening. So we're just going to stay home. You already have, I would say, the 21-year-olds, the like the 18, 19, they're excited because they can finally vote. Then you have about the 20, 21-year-olds to about 45 who's saying they, they, they not, they're not interested. So now it's to, in, to encourage them the importance of voting and to get that to get them thinking now this is something you, you really want to do. But their mindset already is no. And I'm going to give some of those statistics tomorrow for the town hall meeting. And it is shocking to, to hear what some of these young, they're like, why bother? We're not doing this. Um, Dr. Antoinette says, um, is that denying the citizens of the third district in New York representation? Pretty much that's what happened. Um, so we have the house leader say that a package won't be voted on without border security, and that's not going to happen until the former guy is reelected. The Hill reports that Speaker Mike Johnson rejected the bipartisan proposal, and he said he doesn't want to talk about anything until after the November election. So what does you don't want to talk about anything mean? So you're not going to do anything? What are we paying you for? Can we, can we impeach you as we the people? And y'all, this is all on top of the consumer price index that came out yesterday. Y'all, it it the index in January fell 3.1% year over year growth. Um, this was down from 3.4% rise in December, but higher than what the analysts um, predictions of 2.9%. Now, this annual figure, which tracks the change in prices of basket goods and services, has been the lowest since June. All right. So the prices increased by 0.3% on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, and last month, it was 0.2%, which complicates, y'all, because the Federal Reserve 
and then Jen, uh, Chairman Powell's coming out with the report, and this report is either going to hold the interest rate where they are. They said there could be a possibility that it may go up or down. They don't know, and there's and they're not answering any questions. But they're also this is attached, y'all. When as I've been watching this, this is attached, and we shared this, and we had uh, Cassandra Cummings on last Tuesday. Uh, this is attached to the market. This is attached to the jobs report. This is attached to even everything that's going on. That's why Chairman Powell came out and said, I'm trying my best not to make this political. Well, it is political. And we have we have people uh, jockeying for positions and, and trying to send a narrative that's actually messing up we the people. So y'all, this is the opportunity for us to stand up and use our voices in this season. Well, then we got more headlines, y'all. I told you, we're not getting to the writing a bill today. Uh, CBS News reports that Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash drivers will strike today over fair pay and safety. And this is about 130,000 drivers expected to decline rides uh, to and from airports. <laughs> so you better get, you, better get your friend to take you to the airport today. And they're doing this between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. local time. They didn't say if it was Eastern, uh, Central, I don't know, so 11 to 1. Why are they striking? Well, welcome to, the, uh, to 2024 and social media and algorithm. They're striking because of algorithm. Why? Um, they're saying that their algorithm pricing me method uh, model, drivers are no longer guaranteed a fixed payout from a ride. Their earnings decrease. Y'all, this is crazy. Y'all, algorithm is dictating how soon they get a call, when they pick them up, and what their price fix will be. Who started this? Yeah, this is connected to everything else that's happening. That's why I put this right under the consumer price index. This is what's happening. So algorithm is dictating Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash. Yeah. And then CNBC is reporting that Instacart is going to lay off 250 employees. They're going to decrease their workforce by 7%. Yeah, Kim Edmondson, that's jacked up. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know if Latrice Jones is still on here today or not. But listen, I'm giving my platform to Kanye West for a moment. Y'all, Kanye West broke out in his own, using his iPhone. He broke out and did his own in-car ride, ad, video, whatever. And it hit a it hit a hundred locations during the Super Bowl. So kind of like cactus, I guess you want to say. But y'all homeboy made uh was it 17 million or 18 million dollars? He made some bank off of this, y'all, which 19 million in Yeezy sales. Y'all, if y'all watch the video, it's like you don't know how to spell your name, but like seriously. But y'all, he was so no nonsense. And he made Latrice says she's still here. I'm talking about your boy Kanye. Uh so uh Ye Ye, whatever his name is, announced uh his haul from Sunday on social media to kick off his, uh, off his what he called his new week. Y'all, I watched the video and I was cracking up. And I said, yes, he's crazy genius. I said, he used the iPhone. Y'all, we're sitting here trying to figure out how to make things happen. Homie said, I'm going to just use my iPhone. He spelled out his name. Like nobody knew how to spell his name. <laughs> And he said, oh, it's just in the link. Just look at the link. I got tennis shoes and I got something. And he goes, just look at the link. I mean, it's really a messed up video. But y'all, he made $19 million off of his iPhone, y'all. Off of his iPhone. That's what he did. Now, I got to flip one over to, to Beyonce. Y'all say what y'all want to. I need to know in the chat, when she bust out, and however she's going to break the internet, that she's going to do a country concert. I need to know how many of y'all want to go, because I'm going. I'm going. Y'all, Texas Hold'em by Beyonce is no joke. She says, this ain't Texas. I done played that song so much, my husband was like, seriously, Gail? Yes, yes, seriously. 
As I park the Lexus, throw the keys up. Y'all know every word to this song, including all the cuss words, okay? Y'all, the song is genius. I can already hear as a Dolly Parton, you need to go ahead and partner with Beyonce. Somebody, Carrie Underwood, somebody, because this is going to go wild. In addition to that, there were a lot of people calling in the country uh, uh, radio shows. Y'all, this is genius, too. And they were telling them, we're, they was giving them the request or sending the email or posting uh, 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 a social media. Can you play Texas Hold'em by Beyonce? And they were like, uh, we don't play Beyonce. Y'all black Twitter, y'all call it X if you want to. Black Twitter went in. Believe me, all of those places that said they weren't playing Beyonce are now playing Beyonce. They also got in more ad dollars after playing Beyonce. Y'all play Beyonce. You know she playing with those people, y'all. That's a genius move, too. That's going to put her on the country chart immediately, y'all. Texas Hold'em is the bomb. Kim Edmondson said it is a good song. Latrice Jones said me and my mini-me are on board. Let's go. Let's go. We got to go. Y'all, CDC, CDC, CDC. We're almost out of here, y'all. We're not doing the Wednesday workshop today. Uh, the CDC is reportedly considering dropping its five-day COVID isolation recommendations starting in April. The agency will instead advise Americans that they no longer need to stay home if they are fever-free for at least 24 hours without the help of medication or other symptoms. And when they say without the help of medication, they're also considering Tylenol as a medication. Now, people going to be honest, we don't know. But y'all, they're saying, please follow the guidelines with those for flu and RSV. So there's that. We're not writing a bill today, but I want us to, y'all, because I want us as the News in Motion family. I told them this two years ago, and we're finally doing it. So we'll figure out when we're going to do this Wednesday workshop. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Maybe it'll happen next week. But I want us to write a bill. I do, and I want us to submit it for consideration. All right, y'all, here's the inspirational message. Let it go. Keeping up with Lent today is Ash Wednesday, as I shared at the beginning of this broadcast. Over the next 40 days, I want you all to do something. I want you to remove one item from your closet, from your bookshelf, from your pantry, from wherever, your linen closet, wherever, and put one item each day over the next 40 days in a basket. At the end of the 40 days, I want you to donate those items to a place that can share them with someone who could really use them. Start thinking of a place now and reach out to them to see if there is a real need, if there's someone in need. If you don't want to use an organization, find somebody who may just need the items. But one day, y'all, Something that you like, okay? Not something that you're like, oh, I'm not wearing this anymore, so I'm putting this in the basket, or I don't like this anymore, or, or it has moth balls, uh, moth um, uh, holes in it. No, something that you like. We're going to go another level. We're going to choose things that we enjoy, and from those things, put them in a basket and then give them away. All right, y'all, that was a whole lot today. That was a whole lot. Sorry we could not get to the uh wednesday workshop but this news was hot y'all gotta connect these dots if you do not have the friday rundown please sign up because i'm going to load it with all types of information and did y'all like y'all's freebie this past friday if y'all haven't opened that email i need to open that email because there's a freebie in there yes there is there's a freebie in there but listen y'all i love y'all happy valentine's day um, I'm not eating any chocolate today. I was going to, but I'm not going to eat any chocolate today. Um, I'm not even going to cook a nice dinner. Oh, by the way, if y'all are looking for a, a Bible study, it starts tonight. Y'all have to inbox me or email me. Um, my husband is kicking off this series during Lent called This Is Us. I had a sneak peek and I was like, well, you want me on the floor every Wednesday night? Like what's happening here? Y'all, this, this Bible study is, is, is what the young people say lit. It is lit. So if you want to join us uh, on Zoom, um, seven, no, 630 to eight, I think, or seven, to eight. I think it's, six, I don't know. I'll send you all the information. Just let me know if you're interested and I'll get you the link. Yeah. And he's a, he's the bomb.com teacher. Yes. I'm shouting him out. So y'all, y'all know what I say. Stay well, everyone. And remember, make some bold moves. We're out.
ממשיך.